one does whatever is necessary to do the job. But then thirdly and finally, here's what a co-laborer will do, a fellow laborer will do. He will do the job at his very best. Make sure that he settles for nothing less than excellence for the cause of Christ. You see, what you think about the project will determine oftentimes what you'll do for the project. So it's important that we think right about the project so that we will do right about the project. Right. And it's all perception. That's right. The story is told of two men who were building the building. They said, what are you doing? He said, I'm laying brick. The man next to him, what are you doing? I'm building an edifice. Now, both of them doing the same work, but two different attitudes total. The thing that we have to do is realizing that every job for the Lord Jesus Christ deserves excellence. We need to give our very best to the master. Amen? If you're not sure, you need to give your very best. The pastor, I need to give my very best. Deacons need to give their very best. Choir members, musicians, we need to offer nothing less than our best for the master. David says, I don't want to render to the Lord what didn't cost me something. And all musicians know that in order to do something your very best, it requires a commitment. It requires time. Paul says he's a committed companion. Notice the third thing. Not only is he a committed brother, and men, we ought to be committed brothers. He's a committed companion. Men, we ought to be committed companions and co-laborers together. But he was a committed soldier. So yet I suppose it necessary to send to you, Epaphroditus, my brother and companion in labor and fellow soldier. Never had an opportunity to be in the military. But everything I hear from soldiers, that is, soldiers who've been in combat, the camaraderie and the importance of having a fellow, a fellow, a fellow soldier. Those who understand what fellowship is, coin and need, partners together. I'm watching your back, you're watching my back. We're in this together as soldiers. One thing soldiers don't need are non-soldiers. Hmm. Amen. Soldiers have to have other soldiers because we're at war. That's right. Paul says we are at war. It's a spiritual warfare. And Epaphroditus is a fellow soldier. In times of battle, he stands to fight. When the enemy comes, he's not running. He's standing. He's a fellow soldier. He is a committed soldier. Even though I've never been in the military and had that experience, nevertheless, God uses for the pastor military language. Paul writing to Timothy, he warns him of being a distracted soldier. I can't imagine being at war and being distracted. You can assume what would be the consequences of being distracted. So Paul tells Timothy that you need to enter into the ministry without distraction. That's where you come in. Your responsibility is to do whatever you can so that the pastor and leaders are not distracted. That we can give ourselves continuously to the work. Because once you're a soldier, you're distracted. It's very easy for the enemy to come in. So a soldier has to be committed to the battle, committed to the war. He has to be like the soldier you write. Oh my, Bathsheba had a hug before David. And he was a committed soldier. 
bringing him from the line, been fighting with the troops. He had a camaraderie with them. No, Uriah David said, you come home, go down to your wife. Been away from your wife, you go home with, to your wife. Going home. David woke up the next morning, Uriah was right out front, ready to go fight. He said, No, how can I go home to my wife when the soldiers of Israel are still fighting? 